Today, our search for animal adventure takes us near the town of Burley in tropical Queensland, where a special wildlife sanctuary has been built to record and study the habits of wild animals. Here we meet David Flay, the scientist who founded the sanctuary. He gives us a warm welcome, even though film units do upset the sanctuary's routine. Our previous film work together was for the Sundowners. Its wildlife scenes were photographed here. The home of a scientist, reflecting a lifetime of study devoted to wild animals. But now to plan our new film about the Taipan. This is one of the world's deadliest snakes, a killer. Until recently there was no known cure for its bite. David recalls his first decision to breed it and to study its habits. How his first live specimen was captured in a log by Grazier Roy Atkinson near Gympie, Queensland. How Siegfried Flay joined the hunt for the Taipan and managed to photograph the whole exciting story. This is her film we're about to see now. The capturing of their first Taipan. This is the log Roy Atkinson discovered, with a snake inside. David shines his flashlight. Yes, it's a taipan. With the log shortened, now to grab its tail. Keep at arm's length. Watch those eager jaws. One bite could be fatal. Roy pins its neck. David grabs firmly behind the head. The taipan is now milked to reduce its supply of poison or venom should there be a slip bagging the prize. Hmm, definitely not a job for amateurs. Safely caught and caged, one of the world's big three venomous snakes, the Australian taipan, Asian King Cobra, the African member. Taipan, a coppery-colored body, something like the brown snake, but its neck much thinner. When angry, its head flattened and distended, its tongue flickering, tail lashing. But their first taipan, sensitive to new surroundings, dies in captivity. Many more months of searching follow before Roy Atkinson finds another taipan curled up in a dead tree. The subterranean hollow is widened. David carefully probes for the snake's tail. Got it. Not so long, but a heavy specimen. Drop it and it will bite. And all the while you remember there is no cure for its bite at this time. A sigh of relief. The danger is over. Pretty lively fellow, this. They call him Flash Gordon. That year, three more snakes are added to the collection and named Alexandra, Bodicea, Roy. The hunt has been successful. The first task back at the sanctuary is to milk venom for the Commonwealth Serum Laboratories, still experimenting with a cure to be made from the venom itself. Dr. McCabe assists. Meet Bodicea. She gave the record discharge of 350 milligrams of taipan venom at one milking. Now that's about ten times the yield from a large tiger snake. And now enough snakes have been captured to begin the next stage of the experiment. Attempts at breeding. Comes the mating season. And Siegfried Flay obtains some extremely rare film. Flash Gordon and Alexandra performing the Taipan courting dance.
1957, and the first batch of eggs is laid, but only one is fertile. Twelve in all, soft-shelled, smooth and oval. They're placed in a humidity crib, but none hatches. The second batch a year later. Quite a number develop, but the snakelets die as they begin leaving the eggs. This time, David Flay constructs a larger incubator, tries other combinations of temperature and humidity control. The third year, 20 eggs are laid. But a heat wave strikes, only three eggs continue to develop. 106 days of incubation pass, and still no signs. The 107th day, and then a tiny head pokes through from its protective juices, and the first taipan to be completely bred and hatched in captivity surveys the world. By this stage, the eggs have shriveled. Their skins become tough and leathery. You'd wonder how the baby snakes could break through. Well, nature provides the answer. They cut their way out with a razor-sharp egg slitter especially grown on the upper jaw. Other interesting facts are observed. Each snakelet stays with its head partly out of the shell for 48 hours, adjusting to the new atmosphere. Then it unwinds, 15 inches long from an egg measuring only two and a half by one and a half inches. The first out is named Big Eye, the second Little Eye, the third Twinkle Eye. Since then, 21 young have been hatched and flown to the San Diego and Taronga Park zoos. The months pass. Alexandra, the mother, sheds her coat wriggling out of the old skin like a finger pulled from a glove. David notes that the young growing taipan shed or slough their skins ten or more times a year. Now over twelve months old, the babies can strike several inches high. So David gives a cautious hand wave to make sure they are resting inside a log and can be lifted out safely. This is one of his regular procedures to get them used to being handled. The small taipans are from a new batch. The bigger ones are old friends Big Eye and Little Eye, almost two years old. Photographed close up, Big Eye looks big all over and very cross at being disturbed. Look at his tongue flickering. Natural instinct still makes them annoyed when moved, but by the end of the season, they will probably allow David to pick them up with his bare hands. To persuade them to accept handling, David rewards each snake with a meal. Here, another habit is observed. The taipan bites its prey, knows it will not get far away, so takes time pulling it into a hideout to swallow it at leisure. The silken skin shed by the older taipans mark the passing of another season. Another winter has come and gone, while the young snakes mostly sleep, but do not truly hibernate. David decides to remove them with his bare hands to see if they remember being handled the year before. If not, of course, they will bite him. This is the actual experiment conducted for the first time. A cure for taipan bite and antivenine is now available, but the risk from a bite is still very great. A dead mouse is placed nearby to excite their appetites. 
Big Eye gets the scent and flexes his jaws ready to strike. He's picked up once more, but still will not bite his captor. The point is proven. Apparently, Taipan's bred in captivity can be conditioned to gentle handling by the one person. Each day, the experimental work continues. Vegetation is planted. New cages are built into hillsides facing the sun for even warmth. Handled with care, Taipans prove to be surprisingly timid and retiring, but suddenly disturbed, they can become ferocious. Their quietest time is winter, usually sleeping. They're most dangerous in the springtime when they roam during the morning and in summertime, usually hunting at nights only. And their favorite resting place? A hollow stump or a log of medium inside diameter. Courageous work. Men like Flay, Slater, Worrell, Chandra, the late Barclay Cook and Kevin Budden have now enabled the Commonwealth Serum Laboratories to develop a specific cure for Taipan snake bite, an antivenin. But it is David Flay's continuing scientific study of the Taipan's life history which is adding much to our knowledge of one of the world's deadliest snakes and has provided us with a most unusual animal adventure.